God is in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has a firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word that was addressed to Jeremiah by the Lord. Get up and make your way down to the potter's house. There I shall let you hear what I have to say. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at the wheel. And whenever the vessel he was making came out wrong, as happens with the clay handled by potters, he would start afresh and work it into another vessel as potters do. Then this word of the Lord was addressed to me. House of Israel, cannot I do to you what this potter does? It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in mine, house of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And response to the psalm, He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. My soul, give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to my God while I live. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. Put no trust in princes, in mortal men in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all there contain. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a hole of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen hold it ashore. Then sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said, Yes. And he said to them, Well, then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things both new and old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left the district. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to um, St. George's Church. Um, this is our Thursday Mass. Um, my name is Father Tamin, and I'm the vicar of this parish. And a warm welcome to um, all those, our regular you know, worshippers, those who are regularly tuned in to our live streaming, and also um, those who are new to us. And, and in particular, those who may watch this video later um, on our Facebook page or are from my um, you know, the YouTube channels. Um, today's gospel story is a very famous one, well-known one, uh, something about until the end of time. It is rather scary image, isn't it? At the end of the time, the angels will appear and then they will collect, they will separate the wicked from the just. And then, then the angels will throw them into the, the, you know, the burning furnace you know, the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. That is a kind of a scary image. And ironically, well, not ironically, because this is um, the message that we heard from our Lord himself. What well, we know, sometimes, you know, not always, though, <laughs> but, um, you know, there are many preachers actually using this particular image to give some warning to the faithful. This is what may happen. This is what will happen at the end of time. And they always add some more. And then therefore, you must actually do this. Um, yeah, sometimes I have to say it works. It may work. Or sometimes it may not. If you use this image constantly again and again and again, and I don't think you know, um, the parishioners here, in this, for example, in this parish, will actually listen to me if I just keep using this image of the judgment, the final day. This is an important message that we must understand. But at the same time, I think there is another message that we also must remember. Because without this the second thing that I'm going to say, we won't be able to understand the nature of Jesus, well, which is love. And then that second message is actually coming from our first reading, a reading from the Jeremiah. 
the story of potters. And Jeremiah heard this, you know, um, the, um, the voice of the Lord, and who says, well, now you must go to the potter's house, and then if you go there, I will let you know. I'll say something if you get down there. And then Jeremiah followed um, the lead of, um, followed um, the instructions of our Lord. And then when he got there, he saw these potters. They're working on, on wheels, and on the top of the wheels, there must be a clay. And what he noticed was the potters, they, well, sometimes they make some mistakes, aren't they? Sometimes, you know, things came out, and, and, and it is not what, exactly what they wanted, in that case, what they do is only clay still. So they, they bashed it and then they put the clay into another pot and then using the same clay and then they created new one. And while Jeremiah was watching that specific activities of potters making a, you know, the clay jars, Sometimes, whenever they think it's not good, they just put them into another, you know, the clay pot or whatever, and then they created a new one from there. And then the word of the Lord came. Don't you think that is where we are now? The potters, they have clay in their hands. So do I. I have my people, my chosen, the people of Israel, the house of Israel. You are in my hand. If I think the outcome is not good, I will mold you again. I will give you always the second chance because I am the Lord who created the earth and heavens and I am patient. And then I love all of you. Therefore, I will give you another chance. Of course, when time comes, the message of the Lord is clear. When time comes, the angel will appear. And he will separate the wicked from the just. That is as clear as the sky or whatever. But still... We are in the middle of that. We are still walking towards the time. And while we are walking, while we are on our journey together, we must not forget that our Lord is patient. And what you and I need to do is whenever we realize that we are not in the right form, we need to go back to our Lord who is generous and who is patient and who is all loving and he will give us a second chance. How many times God will give us that second chance? Three, four times? No. He will never stop giving me a second chance. As Jesus explained to the Peter, how many times do I need to forgive? Seven times? No, it's more than that. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this lovely um, Thursday um, in an evening, where I am now in, in um, the Enfield, in freezing water, this whole area, possibly in, in the whole um, southeast you know, um, England, we had a beautiful day, the glorious day. It's really, really hot day, actually. While we are enjoying this wonderful weather together, we shall think about our Lord as well. He is ever kind, patient, and loving. And he will give us the second chance if necessary. Because of that, you and I, in this afternoon, well, in this early evening, we can say, thanks be to God.
May God bless us all in our journey together. We may daily be renewed by his love. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and for the world and for ourselves. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for all the Christian leaders in particular. We pray for Pope Francis, Justin Welby, Stephen Cottrell, um, Archbishop of York and Canterbury, and also um, Bartholomew, the ecumenical patriarch. We also pray for all other Christian leaders. And also we pray for our bishops as they lead us. Pray for Sarah, the bishop of this diocese, and Rob Wickham, our area bishop. Pray for all those who dedicated um, their lives to the service of God, both ordained and laity, and then those who are discerning their vocation at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continually pray for the world where we live. We pray for peace and prosperity and security and safety. Pray for those who are suffering from war and terror. People in the Middle East and in Northern Africa. People in North Korea and China. Pray for those who are wrongly oppressed because of their political opinions are different from others. Maybe they have different religions. Maybe they're different by their colour. Pray for all those who are wrongly judged and oppressed. May they see peace and justice be done in their place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for the world's leaders and all those who have more influence than others and are those who have more you know, power in um, the political or the economical um, situation. They may use what they have faithfully and honestly and diligently they may bring peace, love, and unity rather than hatred, division, and difficulties. We also pray for our Queen and her Prime Minister, members of the Cabinet, and all the politicians govern this country. They may work also diligently and faithfully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us also pray for our church. We pray for our parish, the parish of St. Um, George Enfield in Freezy Water. We pray for each and every one of us who tuned in this evening and all the members of this faithful congregation, wherever they may be as we are trying to open our church door again for the public worship, we pray for our church wardens and all members of the PCC and all those who will come to the church to help others. In particular, we pray for the sizemen will do a very important role whenever we open the church door. Pray for all our activities that we are planning to do in this parish. In particular, we pray for our big cleaning sessions on Saturday. We may be able to get together feeling that we are all connected. We may ever enjoy the joy of preparing ourselves for the worship. 
also continually pray for those who have to stay at their home, in their homes, those who need to be still isolated, those who are classified as a vulnerable groups, they may also find peace and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for our neighboring Christian churches around us. We pray for the, um, um, the Albany Church, local Methodist and Baptist Church around us. Pray for our neighboring parishes, parish of St. Peter and Paul's, parish of St. James and Jesus Church in Forty Hall. We remember in our prayer all their religious leaders, ministers and vicars, and in the faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for those who are in particular need at this time, those who are unwell in body, mind, and soul. Pauline Stathers, Dorian Flint, Diana Jones, Barbara Baker, Luke Sheehan, Claudia Bonner, Patricia Maloney, Violet Pockrand, Susie Athino, Father Alan Cross, Emma Evans, Angela Bell, Heather Anderson, Kathleen Hawkins, Patricia Ray, Maudie Fox, Dory Lynch, Maureen, um, Maureen Rosario, Michael Shine, Cindy Hart, Sajid Tosun, Anne Bland, Benny Watts, Angela Fairclough, Kathleen McGuigan, Robert Gerson, Brian, and Aaron Deering, Father Brian McMahon, and baby Unu Chung. May the Holy Spirit bring healing and comfort to them, and also to all those who are looking after them. They may hold fast the message of hope and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And also we pray for the faithful departed, Sue Lee, Robert Keogh, Susan Smith, Marilana Pericleus, Phil Fertrell, Peggy Martin, and Paul Griffith. And also we remember those who celebrate their year's mind today. Lily Hunt, George Smith, Bernard Devine, and Peter White. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. And now in silence we humbly commend our own private prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word, through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Now, through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. And through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body, and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you things. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you things. He gave it to them and saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, 
we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this thy table of mercy, for Lord, to trust in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for the eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep me safe for the eternal life. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live. May we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.